Hi everyone, my name is Emily Baker. I'm head of education for the Los Angeles Rabbit Foundation. and I'm glad you're here to learn about this very important topic. RHDV2 is a quick, painful killer for rabbits. Without going into too much gruesome detail, your rabbit may show typical signs of illness like lethargy and rejecting food, but that could be any disease. If your rabbit gets RHDV2, they will die suddenly and your only external clue may be a bloody nose from the internal bleeding. I can't be any clearer about this. Your rabbit could die a very uncomfortable death if you don't protect them from this virus. Starting off with a very brief history of the virus and its various strains and iterations. In the 1980s, the first version of RHDV, RHDV1, was found in a shipment of German rabbits headed to China. In less than a year, 140 million rabbits died. In 1995, RHDV1 escaped an Australian lab and killed 10 million rabbits in a mere eight weeks. More recently, in the last five years, RHDV2 has been spreading rapidly through North America and Mexico, infecting both pets and wild rabbits. These numbers are huge, and I'm sharing this history because I think it illustrates just how deadly and contagious these viruses are. It will wipe out populations of rabbits in no time at all, and that includes household pets. We weren't as worried about it here in the United States because RHDV1 wasn't contagious to our wild rabbit population, so it couldn't spread quite so easily. However, the latest strain of RHDV2 has confirmed our worst fears. An early strain of RHDV2 was not infecting wild populations and not spreading rapidly as a result, but a new strain began spreading in Southern California, Arizona, and other Southwestern United States in 2020, like we didn't have enough problems that year. And this one was infecting wild populations. Why is it so contagious? First, it's what scientists call sticky and it's resistant to disinfectants. Hand washing won't get all of it off and you'll need to buy special disinfectants for your home. Other animals. It can cling to animals both alive and dead that can spread it both outdoors and in. It lives a very long time. It can remain on surfaces for 225 days at 39 degrees Fahrenheit and for 105 days at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Insects. Mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, and even house flies are effective transmitters. The viral load necessary to infect a rabbit is so small that it can fit on the foot of a fly. Dust. This virus travels via dust, which can easily hit your ride on your car, your shoe, or even the wind. So the answer to our question, are your rabbits at risk, is a resounding yes. Your rabbits are at risk. Even if you don't live in an area where RHDV has already been confirmed, it will spread to your area and probably sooner than you think. The number one best way to protect your rabbits from RHDV is to get them vaccinated yearly. You'll find a list of veterinarians providing vaccine in the greater Los Angeles area at larabbits.org slash RHDV. If you live elsewhere, we'll tell you about some additional resources later on. If vaccination is absolutely not an option for your family due to cost or something else, the first thing I'll try to say is make it work. Your pet's life is worth it. But if it's truly not an option, let's say you currently don't have RHDV vaccine approved for use in your area, then here are a few things you can do to protect your rabbit. We also recommend you do these things even if your rabbit is vaccinated. No vaccine works 100% of the time. No visits outside. Your rabbit must be kept indoors only and other pets should be inside too. No shoes inside. Take your shoes off before walking through your house. And that goes double if you did something like go on a hike. If you did visit someplace where you may have shared space with a wild rabbit, like on a hike, the easiest and safest way to disinfect your dusty clothes is by putting them in a hot, sunny car for a few hours. Window screens. Mosquitoes and flies are big disease transmitters, as we said, so use screens to keep them out. And track food sources. 
Make sure any hay purchased is safely stored for three or more months and be sure to triple wash veggies with fresh water before feeding them to your rabbit. Better yet, try growing your own veggies indoors. Keep other pets away. Dogs and other pets that go outside should be kept separate from your rabbit. Wipe down dog paws after a walk and avoid areas that you've seen evidence of wild rabbits in. Be sure to keep your dogs and cats flea and tree tick treatments up to date and only treat your rabbit for fleas if you actually see a flea on them and make absolutely sure you use a rabbit safe flea treatment prescribed by your rabbit's vet for your rabbit. Disinfect. Use accelerated hydrogen peroxide, also known as rescue solution, or bleach at a one to 10 dilution and rinse well. Currently, the primary transmission remains rabbit to rabbit and humans coming in contact with one rabbit and then another, like going hiking and stepping on virus shed from a wild rabbit. To summarize, the best way to protect your rabbit is through a combination of vaccination, indoor housing, and biosecurity measures. You see here Harley, who got the Filovac vaccine in February. To find a veterinarian currently vaccinating for RHDV2 in the greater Los Angeles area, see our Los Angeles Rabbit Foundation referral list at larabbit.org slash RHDV. For much more detailed information about RHDV2 in the greater United States, House Rabbit Society has some fantastic resources at rabbit.org slash RHDV. And to keep up to date on the latest information about RHDV, there are a couple of Facebook groups you can join. The group listed on the screen, Rabbit Hemorrhagic Disease News Network, has members who are veterinarians in Europe where they have much more experience with the virus and vaccine. This group is well-regulated for accurate and up-to-date information on the spread of the virus, vaccination clinic locations, and more. Finally, if you have a question that wasn't answered today, you can always email us, the Los Angeles Rabbit Foundation at larabbits at gmail.com. Thank you for coming to learn how to protect your rabbit today. Again, I'm Emily Baker, Head of Education for the Los Angeles Rabbit Foundation.